Welcome back to the heat. Dozens of babies have died in Brazil from birth defects that impact the size of a child's head. And there's lots of concern about something called the Zika virus. We begin with CCTV correspondent Paulo Cabral, who joins us from Sao Paulo. And Paulo, what is the latest on the number of babies that have been impacted so far? And how deadly is this disease? And do we know what's causing it? Well, Anand, look, we have to look from, to this from two angles. There is a Zika virus, which is a kind of dengue fever. Most people survive it, even if they suffer a little bit for a, a couple of months or so. And then there is the microcephaly, which is the abnormal reduction of the size of the cranium that's been happening to, to, to many babies. And this could be related to the Zika virus. So actually, we have two different conditions there. And now, talking about this uh, microcephaly, there are 4,000 suspected cases. 350 have been confirmed so far. It's a lengthy process to confirm it's actually. It's a case of microcephaly. It's not just uh, measuring the head with a tape, you know. That's the first stage. That's when it can become a suspected case. But then you need a clinical test for that. And so far, uh, 350 have been confirmed and, and 350 have been cleared. So what doctors say is that it's likely that half this uh, 4,000 cases uh, could be confirmed as microcephaly. Most babies survive. Uh, we have 49 suspected deaths so far. So most babies survive, but pretty much all of them will carry uh, impacts to their development, usually intellectual uh, deficiency and, and, and all that. So, uh, and uh, again, it's just it's not sure exactly what's what's happening. You know, just the uh, government has identified an abnormal number of cases of microcephaly right when the Zika virus started circulating in Brazil. So this is the strongest hypothesis right now. And Paulo, what's been the medical response so far? How is Brazil dealing with this? Well, look, uh, the Zika virus is a recent arrival uh, to Brazil. There is suspicion that it actually began circulating here uh, with the World Cup as thousands of foreigners came to Brazil and possibly also uh, migrants from, migrants from Africa coming to Brazil could also have carried uh, the Zika virus. But the mosquito that carries this virus, it's a mosquito-borne disease, the mosquito called Aedes aegypti, well, this is a node problem in Brazil. It's also the mosquito that carries the dengue fever and we're having an epidemic of dengue fever in Brazil this year. So uh, one point is that the government has intensified the fight against this mosquito, which is hard. You know, as I said, uh, the fight against dengue fever has not been won over the last over the last years. On the other, they have also formed a, a task force of doctors from different universities in Brazil and also other uh, medical research centers to try first to explain what's happening. As you're saying, scientists still don't know exactly what's the correlation between Zika virus and microcephaly and also trying to develop uh, new treatments, new therapies. Uh, some funding for the creation of a vaccine also uh, has, been, has, been, has been given now uh, for these for this researchers. And the government says that pregnant women should take all care with mosquito bites using repellents and, and trying to stay indoors. But you know what's scary also, Anand, at the very beginning of this crisis, the first advice that the government gave to people was don't get pregnant. Can you imagine something that's more uh, harmful or, 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 or that could threaten more a whole civilization than telling people just you can't reproduce right now? And this virus, Paolo, the Zika virus, is it showing up in other countries in Latin America? I mean, they must be concerned that this could spread, right? Yes, it is spreading already. You know, the first case was reported in Brazil in May 2015. And actually, in October 2015, it was reported in Colombia. Now it's in 19 countries across uh, South America and the Caribbean. Haiti has recently reported also five cases. Uh, so, yes, it is spreading. And one thing is that the Aedes aegypti, that mosquito-carrying disease, uh, we were talking about right now it, it's extremely efficient to adapt itself to different environments and it's now all over south america all over uh, latin america actually and the caribbean so what scientists say is that it's, it's a matter of time you know if the mosquito carrying disease is in all these countries of course, science can help to slow it down, maybe with a vaccine or maybe with transgenic mosquitoes that are being used to fight this, uh, this, this small but very dangerous beast. But what scientists say is that if it's there, it's going to spread through Latin America. You know, the United States has already uh, uh, issued a, an advisory, a warning for travelers coming to South America to be aware of the Zika virus and for pregnant women even to avoid coming down here. Thanks, Paolo. That's CCTV's Paolo Cabral reporting from Sao Paulo. Joining me now from Miami is Dr. Eileen Marty. She is a professor of infectious diseases at Florida International University. Dr. Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you. 
These birth defects are being called microcephaly. I guess that's the medical term, the scientific term. What exactly is that, and why are babies so vulnerable to it? Well, microcephala is a term that means micro or tiny head. So what, what's happening there is that these children are being born with extremely small, misshaped heads. And within that misshaped heads, you have neurologic problems. You have problems with the brain. The brain is malformed and immature to a point that it will never mature to normality. And what are the survival rates for those who get this particular condition? The, oh, it's not good. The children don't, don't last, uh, they, they don't tend to do very well. And even if they do survive for a, a few years, um, these children will never develop normally. They'll never have normal intelligence. Now, the Zika virus has been linked to these deaths. Uh, what is that virus and how does that virus spread? Well, Zika virus is one of the many flaviviruses. Um, it was first described in 1947 in a rhesus monkey while studies were being done for yellow fever by the Rockefeller Institute. And similar to other flaviviruses, it is mainly transmitted by mosquito bite and a particular genus of mosquito. There are thousands of different types of mosquitoes, and it so happens that the one that transmits Zika is the same one that transmits yellow fever, dengue, and chikungunya. Right, as we just heard from our correspondent. Now, is this the mother being, I guess, bitten by a mosquito? Yes. Uh, the, the, the risk primarily is when a mother, during the time that she is pregnant or immediately, or, or immediately before becoming pregnant, becomes infected with the Zika virus. That seems to be the link. Now, the link is not 100% proven, but there's tremendous amount of evidence, growing evidence, that it is, in fact, a cause of this condition. There are other things that can cause microcephala beyond Zika virus. So what are the typical symptoms that uh, someone would see or experience? Most people who are infected by this virus do not get any symptoms at all. 75 to 80 percent of people who are infected by the virus are completely without symptoms. Among those who do manifest symptoms, what they typically get is conjunctivitis or red eyes. They, they get a rash uh, that generally starts around the face. It's a kind of a little pink tiny pink dots that then spreads throughout the rest of the body. They get joint pain. They may have a low-grade fever, nothing very dramatic. Um, some people have muscle aches. Some people have nausea. Some people get headaches. But that's generally the, and of course, the I don't feel goods, you know, that myalgia that we call it. So, uh, I'm sorry, muscle pain as well. Now, these individuals generally get better in two, three, four maybe seven days, sometimes a little bit longer, but not, mu not much more than that. So for an adult or a healthy adult who gets infected with this virus, the problem is not very grave. The problem might happen if the person has an underlying disease, somebody who already has uh, kidney disease or cancer or something else going on in their system. In those instances, then we have seen that the Zika virus can uh, really aggravate the condition, and there have been a few deaths from people that way. But generally, it's not a big deal. The problem is indeed for the infant within a pregnant woman. And what can be done in terms of uh, prevention uh, and treatment? Well, unfortunately, there is no a licensed vaccine at this time. In fact, there's no vaccine for Zika at this time. So the best prevention is not truly available, uh, and there's no specific treatment. Uh, there is some overlap in some protection with people who have the yellow fever vaccine because there is some cross-reacting protection, cross-reacting antibodies. Um, but uh, the, what, the only thing we can do at this time, since there is no good vaccine, and, and by the way, getting yellow fever vaccine won't necessarily protect you against Zika, so it's not, it's not the answer either. So the only thing that we can do is prevent mosquito uh, bites, and there's a number of ways in which we can do that. So for medical professionals like yourself, uh, what kind of a challenge does a virus like this uh, bring? Well, it's a huge challenge because, uh, first of all, it's extremely tragic 
to see this happening to any baby, uh, to any family with a baby such as this. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tragedy that affects the entire family, affects their community, affects their friends, and affects the, the, the nation economically. Certainly, uh, these new restrictions that have been um, recommended, this recommendation not to travel to Zika in, infected uh, areas where, where there are, where is ongoing transmission of Zika is going to have economic impacts to those nations. And, uh, and so we take this very, very seriously. Uh, so really what we need to do is get extremely serious about developing a vaccine as quickly as possible, which is indeed what the Ministry of Health in Brazil has already announced that they are attempting to do. I was looking at some figures, and in the last few months, there have been over 3,500 cases that have been recorded. Uh, how deadly could this disease become? I mean, are there any fears that it could be uh, an Ebola pandemic that we saw in West Africa, it could get to that stage? No, I, I, this is not that kind of a virus. It doesn't have that type of potency in healthy adults. The tragedy in this case is for infants, and that's a, that's a very significant tragedy, uh, not to mention the fact that um, we just don't know the extent of the of the damage that this this is currently doing to anyone who's infected. So what kind of recommendations are there for people who are pregnant right now and perhaps who would be susceptible to this virus? Right. Well, the the issue that uh, that a pregnant woman in, uh, infected with Zika could have a baby with this is huge. And because of that, the recommendation is if the woman manifests any of the symptoms that we just talked about for Zika, such as the, the rash, the red eyes, the low-grade fever, the joint pain, that she be tested immediately. So a woman traveling to an area that has Zika, for example, uh, it's recommended that if she develops these symptoms, then within two weeks that she immediately have RT-PCR, which is a type of genetic uh, detection of the virus. Um, if she does not have symptoms whatsoever, then the recommendation is that we do ultrasound to see uh, if we detect any of the changes in the infant that indicate Zika virus infections, such as microcephaly or calcifications in the brain. If those are discovered, then there would be testing for a Zika virus.